So now the globe is truly entrenched in war for the first time in history. What does that mean? Let's talk about what warfare looked like. The 19th and 20th centuries were full of firsts in the arena of war. During the Civil War, we saw the first major maritime battles utilizing ironclad ships rather than wooden boats easily sunk by cannons. Much the same, the Great War, later known as World War I, saw the advent of new weaponry and fighting styles. This is our focus today. As you take notes, you should seek to answer the following question. What weapons and new technology impacted the outcome of World War I? First, let's talk about the shift in how battles were fought on land. Previously, it was typical for land battles to be fought in open fields between opposing forces, a level playing field, if you will. However, with the onset of World War I, weapons technology improved so significantly that we saw the development of trench warfare. According to Britannica, warfare in which opposing armed forces attack, counterattack, and defend from relatively permanent systems of trenches dug into the ground is known as trench warfare. The opposing systems of trenches are usually close to one another. Trench warfare is resorted to when the superior firepower of the defense compels the opposing forces to dig in so extensively as to sacrifice their mobility in order to gain protection. Because weapons technology was so advanced and unprotected soldiers were forced to dig into trenches, something was needed to allow soldiers to move across open land and still be protected. Thus came the tanks. The name tank actually came from British attempts to ensure the secrecy of the new weapons under the disguise of water tanks. During the First World War, Britain began the serious development of this product. The military combined with engineers and industrialists, and by early 1916, a prototype was adopted as the design of future tanks. Britain used tanks in combat for the first time in the Battle of fleur corselet on September 15, 1916. Chemical warfare was also developed during World War I. The first to deploy gas as a weapon was France with tear gas. This wasn't super effective, though, and Germany followed with the use of chlorine gas. It, on the other hand, was very effective, killing approximately 1,100 at Ypres, but they weren't prepared for its success and were unable to capitalize on the moment. The most common gas, though, was mustard gas, which got its name from its mustard color and taste of garlic or horseradish. After the initial use of poison gas, the technology and operational tactics of gas warfare quickly developed and were implemented by the Germans and the Allies throughout the war, including various gases and liquids, practical gas masks, and gas alarm equipment. Combatant nations created chemical warfare units and schools to train them in the tactics of offensive and defensive gas warfare. Another first for combat in World War I was aerial combat. The first airplane flown by the Wright brothers was developed in 1903, so flight was still a brand new technology in general, let alone for the purpose of warfare. For the first time, planes took to the air with the express purpose of air-to-air -air combat, and the French began calling any pilot who shot down five or more enemy planes a las, or an ace. While these aces had no shortage of skill and daring, the winners of most early dogfights were the pilots flying the better technology. As you can see from the image, this object looks nothing like an airplane. But zeppelins were also an important tool in aerial warfare. During World War I, the Germans achieved moderate success in long-range bombing operations with the Zeppelin-type rigid airship, which could attain higher altitudes than the airplanes available. On two occasions during 1917, German Zeppelins made flights of almost 100 hours duration. Such performances led many people to believe that large airships would play a prominent part in aviation development. A number of Zeppelins were distributed to the Allied countries as a part of post-war reparations by Germany. 
So we've talked about the changes in how war was waged by land and by air. The last front we need to talk about is the open ocean. Naval technology had developed a lot once we saw the shift to ironclad ships, and at this point in history we see the development of submarines, and the Germans were leading the way. U-boats is the term for German submarines, which they called undersea boots. Few Americans believed that German U-boats would be able to traverse the Atlantic Ocean to reach American shores, but they were very wrong. By the end of World War I, German U-boats had managed to sink 10 vessels off North Carolina's coast alone and 200 American ships in total, according to the NOAA. We've already talked about how Germans used U-boats to torpedo merchant ships, which was a leading cause for the U.S. joining the war. So it's safe to say that submarines played a prominent role in the outcome of the war. All right, go ahead and take a moment to reflect on today's essential question. What weapons and new technology impacted the outcome of World War I? Some additional questions that might help you to focus your answer. How did warfare change by land, air, and sea? And what new weaponry caused or reacted to these changes?